Ramayana Divine Loophole by Sanjay Patel, pages 24 to 37. Page 24, Deeds of Rama. Rama and Lakshman were inseparable. As they grew toward adulthood, they were both recruited by an old sage, a Brahmarshi named Vishvamitra, who could see into the past and future and predicted a special mission for the duo. The Rishi, a high level of Brahmarshi, or sage, wasted no time and began training his young recruits on how to harness the Dev Astras, weapons of the gods. He also taught them divine mantras and asanas that gave the young warriors profound strength and mental focus. One day during their training, they visited Vishvamitra's ashram only to find that it was plagued by a demon named Tataka. The Rishi explained that due to his vow of nonviolence, he could not take up arms against the demon. Instinctively, Rama drew back his bow and the disrespectful demon was soon vanquished. As Vishvamitra performed last rites for the slain demon, he explained that Rama's action that day would have ramifications in the future and cautioned him to always be mindful of his duty. Page 26. Break a bow, tie the knot. Before returning his two pupils to their kingdom, the Rishi had another vision, which led him to travel with the princes to the neighboring kingdom where an auspicious test was being conducted. The challenge was to lift the bow of Shiva, a feat that only a god could accomplish. After hundreds of noble warriors tried and failed, Vishvamitra politely asked Rama to try. In a single motion, the blue prince placed his hand on the bow and lifted it high over his head. He quickly strung the bow, but as he pulled back, it snapped and broke into pieces. Luckily, this accident was considered a miracle and was cause for a great celebration, as whoever was able to lift the bow would also win the hand of the princess Sita, who was actually an avatar of the goddess Lakshmi. Page 29. Rama and Sita. Sita's father immediately dispatched his fastest messengers to Rama's kingdom to report the good news and to invite his royal court to a wedding. Upon hearing the announcement, Rama's father and his three queens made their way to the neighboring kingdom, accompanied by a grand procession. All of the guests watched as the enchanting princess placed a garland of flowers around Rama's neck, and together they circled a ceremonial fire seven times. Thus, they were married and both kingdoms rejoiced. Rama's father was so pleased that he announced his retirement and proudly declared Rama and Sita the new king and queen. The royal couple lived happily ever after. Well, not quite. Page 30, Exile. Kikei, one of Rama's stepmothers, decided that her own son, Bharata, should be the next king and hatched a plot to do away with the blue prince. The jealous queen wasn't violent, but she was manipulative and reminded the king of the two wishes he had granted her for saving his life in battle. The crafty queen immediately spoke her wishes and demanded that Bharata be made the new king and that Rama be exiled to the jungle for 14 years. Despite his love for his favorite son, the king was a man of his word and honored his promise to the queen. Rama was stripped of his crown at once and commanded by his father to be exiled from the kingdom. Page 32. Rama calmly accepted his fate and headed out for the jungle. Fortunately, the prince wasn't alone, for both Sita and Lakshman were at his side. Sadly, soon afterward, this chapter of Rama's youth came to a close when his father, consumed by guilt, died of a broken heart. Page 34, Royal Rescue. Eventually, the three reached a forest called Chitrakuta, where luckily there was no sign of demons. But before they could settle in, Lakshman spotted a royal procession led by Bharata, who had returned home from a neighboring kingdom after hearing news of his father's death. 
He was horrified to find that his mother had banished Rama from the kingdom. Rama was happy to see his stepbrother, who fell at his feet and begged him to return to the throne. But Rama would never break a promise or disobey an order from his father. Bharata was amazed with Rama's integrity and was more certain than ever that Rama was the rightful king. Bharata announced that if Rama would not be king, then no one would be. He then politely removed Rama's sandals and explained that he would place them upon the throne where they would wait for the true king to return. Page 36, Sacred Shoes. Under a cloud of gloom, Bharata returned to his kingdom and kept his word. He placed Rama's sandals upon the empty throne to act as a symbol of Rama's rule. Bharata and Satrugna then left their court and began their own exile, determined to wait out the 14 years until Rama could return. Swindled out of his kingdom by a jealous queen and stripped of his sandals by her guilt-ridden son, Rama prepared himself for a rough road ahead.